Hey everybody, welcome to the Coffee Break. I'm Franklin Taggart. I have my coffee, do you have yours? And if you do, why don't you just sit down and join me for a little chat here in the break room. The break room's the same as my office, by the way. Didn't know if you noticed. And my office is... It, it has the, the decor of someone who probably just got out of college and went to the thrift store and the yard sale. With the exception of the art on my walls, I feel very privileged to have art from some local artists that I love and um, some, some art pieces that are just truly meaningful to me. Um, the one right in front of me is one I've had for quite a while. I'm not going to get it down and, and show it to you right now, but my dear, dear friend Aura made it for me. At a, at a time when I think we were both going through some pretty, pretty wild, deep blues. And she, she took a Duke Ellington quote, and it was, I merely took the energy it takes to pout and wrote some blues. And then she put it on a canvas and did some beautiful little abstract things with it. It's one of my favorite things in life. And, um... I keep it in front of me all of my working hours. Um, the thing that's on my mind today is this whole uproar about Elon Musk buying Twitter. And, and it seems like that what's really funny, my Facebook feed is full of people that said, I just deactivated my Twitter account. And it's like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> and it's like, that's that's great, I guess, for you, but I don't quite get understand. I, I don't understand why, I don't think. And the thing that's really interesting is like this, this resentment that we have for people who have been very successful uh, and their ability to, you know, put together the resources to buy something. Um, God knows what his motivation is, whether he actually wants to, you know, create a platform where he can be you know, completely 100% himself in all of that glory and not have anybody censor him or not have any, you know, not have any recourse taken. God knows what his motivation is. But, you know, the other thing that, that comes to my mind is that the guy is a billionaire because he's had some brilliant ideas. Personality-wise, he's probably got some defects. Most people do. But he's, he's, he's had some amazing ideas that people still use today. Namely, it's like I get paid through PayPal all the time. <laughs> and I pay people through PayPal all the time. Now, I'm not all that happy about the fees that they keep increasing. But that's not his deal. He sold the company years ago. But the thing that I'll tell you is that it was his idea. And if it wasn't a good idea, people wouldn't be using it. And Tesla, I think it's a great idea. It's an it's an innovative idea, and it's it's one where he solved you know his engineers and 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 his company has solved some pretty incredible problems in order to to make that product viable. And now it's becoming a more and more popular car brand. I, I think we're just on the verge of the beginning of that. And, you know, who knows if he's going to keep that company forever, right? And then you've got SpaceX on top of that. The marvel that I have, I, I, I remember the day watching the the launch of the the rocket where they they brought the boosters back down so that they could be reused. I got choked up about that because that was a remarkable moment in space exploration and that was his idea so the thing that i'm going to say is i'm not ready to bail to bail on twitter i don't use it that much because i just don't have the time to be on it all the time but i would love to see if if he's got an idea for this thing that makes it a better platform i'm interested because quite honestly i'm done facebook is i i just i don't even know why i look at it anymore and I love YouTube. I love being on YouTube. And I love my blog. And I love my podcast. 
Um, LinkedIn, eh, take it or leave it. It's not really, that's not really my crowd there I'm finding. Um, but there's, they're doing some interesting things. It's been, it's been wild to see what Microsoft has done with that company. And it's like, there are a lot of people that don't even understand that it's a different experience than it was even a few years ago when it was still just a place where you would look for a job or park your resume, um, or have some kind of a professional, you know, professional online presence. It's totally different now. And the folks at Microsoft, after Microsoft bought LinkedIn, they've brought some great ideas to the, to the table. And they actually changed it so that some of the old ideas that weren't working are no longer there. So I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt here and say that I think, I think Twitter could be a better platform. I think that there are ways that it could be used where it wouldn't be so chaotic and that, you know, even more legitimate and real conversations can be had. I marvel at the people who have mastered it because I don't understand. I don't understand how they have had the time to figure out how to have those ongoing conversations with other people through a medium that will only let you have 280 characters, <laughs> you know, and then they've got threads and then they've got, you know, God knows what else, but I would love to see, is there a way that that can be innovated to make it a more useful, pleasant and meaningful experience for people? I'm, I'm open to that. I also think that we need to, to stop looking at successful people once they reach a, a certain level of success, I think we need to, to, to look at not treating them as suspicious at that point. They're taking advantage of, of, you know, loopholes that the government has had for, for rich people for a, a long time. That's nothing new, but the fact of the matter is, is that they've earned their success and as a result of that, I feel like that, that there does need to be a modicum of respect for them. Um, that often they don't get now because they're just wealthy. They've, they've earned that and they've found ways to, you know, they've found ways to affect a lot of people's lives in such a way that those people use those products daily. And as a result, they've gotten extraordinarily wealthy from that. Now, at some point, I'm wondering if our country will have the political will to actually, you know, deal with that wealth in a, in a positive way. But for now, I'm not going to hold it against them that they've done really well for themselves. I do feel like that there are some things that need to be regulated. That's just the way that I am. Um, I'm not a complete free market capitalist here. I do love capitalism, but I think that the free market is actually uh, a fantasy that doesn't exist in, in reality. <laughs> you know? It's like the free market is only free until the, the people who have all the money decide that it, uh, they want something and they can pay for it. So those are some things that I have that are opinions that are, you know, kind of in conflict with the, with the whole idea that billionaires are generally good people. But the fact is, is that they've had good ideas and that's why they're doing well. The other thing that I think is really important is to understand that each one of us is capable of creativity that affects people in a positive way. And that's where I feel like that our best opportunities lie. If we, if we take the time instead of saying, you know, waiting for somebody else to open the magic door for us to walk through and saying, here, here is your, you know, here's your mule and here's your 40 acres. What about if, if we were to just go out and find out what people need and find innovative ways to meet those needs that people are willing to pay for? And we can enjoy some success as a result of that. Not a bad way to go. Even if the things that we create are things that, you know, that people have a difficult time ascribing a value to, 
I think that it's still important for us to, to share the things that we make with each other as an enriching experience. It's like I have so many people who come to me who are creative people, the artists and the authors, and they come to me and they say, I don't have any idea if what I'm doing makes any difference at all. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if it's really a worthwhile pursuit. And I'm saying that anytime that you've got your creativity lined up with, you know, with making a positive difference for people, I think at some point it's going to land and it's going to make a difference. And it's going to be positive. Go for it. You know, um, I think it's, I, I think it's really important for us to, to bring our best ideas forward and to go as far with them as we can go. And if we get successful as a result of that, wonderful and if we don't we've at least tried so if you've got an idea that you're sitting on that could be a benefit to other people go ahead and run with it see where you can take it if you need resources and other help to get it done those resources and other help can be found We've got 7.5 billion people on the face of the earth, and at least one of them knows how to help you. So the resources are here. If you've got an idea and you've been sitting on it, just stop that and, and let it out and give it a life. Let it happen. And let's see where it goes, right? What do you got to lose? Really nothing. So... That's my, uh, that's my preach today. Um, I'm not ready to leave Twitter quite yet. Like I said, I don't use it very much, but, um, I'm fascinated by the whole thing. Um, and I'm interested to see if Elon Musk has an idea that actually is worth looking into and waiting around for because he's had some good ones and he may very well have another. Anyhow, folks, that's the uh, coffee break for today. Um, I appreciate your time and your attention, and I will look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Thank you.